Hello everyone. One day, a mom told her little son to clean his room. But each time he went in, he got distracted by all the toys and he put nothing away. She went in and said to him, Stephen, what did mom tell you to do? Clean my room, he said. And did you clean your room? She asked. No, he replied quietly. She disciplined him and then helped him to pray and confess his error to God and ask Jesus to help him get his room cleaned. He seemed to respond really well to all of this and she thought, wow, prayer really works. But Stephen just got down and sat in the middle of the room doing nothing. In frustration, she asked, Stephen, what are you doing? He replied, just as frustrated, Oh, mom, you pray to Jesus, right? I am waiting for him to come and help me clean my room. Do you hear and obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit? to change your way of living. Or, though you hear the promptings, you ignore them and continue to wait for Him to come and clean up the mess in your life for you. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, a part of which we heard today, speaks about two kinds of life, namely, the life of the flesh and the life of the spirit. And he draws a sharp contrast between these two. He says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. What does Paul mean by being in the flesh and being in the spirit? The word flesh means body. There are many references to the flesh in the letters of St. Paul, but it rarely refers to the physical body. He often refers the flesh to the person who is controlled by self and the desires of the self. He speaks of the whole person, body, mind and soul, who longs and strives for the demands of the flesh or one's own desires, which Paul believes are destructive and sinful. In his letters to the different communities, he mentions different people having different destructive forces in them, such as pride, ambition, greed, hatred, envy, arrogance, lust, and so on. He therefore points out that people who are ruled by their sinful selves or desires of the flesh cannot please God. In contrast to the concept of the flesh, Paul says that the spirit is dominated by the spirit of God and God's desires. The spirit of God is the Holy Spirit, which proceeds equally from the Father and from the Son, and the spirit of God desires that we embrace love forgiveness, compassion, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control, and peace. Hence, he tells us that only those who are in the Spirit or seek what God desires can please God. 
In short, as Jesus said, it is mercy that God desires more than sacrifice. Paul then goes on to observe, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Paul reminds us that the sacrament of baptism alone is insufficient and that we must have the Spirit of Christ within us to belong to him and to be a member of the church, his body. In other words, a true Christian is one who has the Spirit of Christ within him and listens to the promptings of the Spirit. If we do not obey the promptings of the Spirit, who is a special gift given to us at baptism, we may lose the Spirit and as a result, we do not belong to Christ. However, Paul encourages us to remain in Christ. He says, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. What he means is that a true Christian may struggle against the sins of the flesh and give in to or succumb to the demands of the flesh on occasions, but the Spirit of God is still in the person because of the person's faithfulness and remorse for sin. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is promised to, to those who love Christ and ask for the forgiveness for sins. As Jesus said, God indeed comes to call not the upright but the sinners. He loves those who truly seek forgiveness for sin. Paul then warns the Christians of the danger of following the flesh. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Paul's point is that we owe nothing to the flesh but owe everything to the Holy Spirit. Because while the works of the flesh lead us to unhappiness, misery and death, the deeds of the Spirit lead us to happiness, peace and a life of grace. To those who live according to the Spirit of God, two precious gifts are given. 1. The Spirit makes us children of God. As His children, we have an intimate relationship with our God the Father. We have the special privilege of speaking to Him and calling Him Abba Father. We can tell Him our joys and sorrows. We can confidently go to Him with our troubles trials and fears. 2. The Spirit makes us heirs of God. As heirs, we are given love, peace and all that belongs to God our Father. Friends, let us examine our life today. Are you living according to the flesh? or according to the Spirit. If you are living in the flesh, then remember the warning of Paul that we bring condemnation and death upon ourselves. We deprive ourselves of our own peace, joy and life. However, we can seek forgiveness for our sins through Jesus Christ and enter into a new way of life through the Holy Spirit. If you are living in the Spirit, then let us rejoice and praise the Lord.
and strive for more peace and life in Him. Amen. God bless you.